in tonight's reading, Christ stands up for you. Welcome back to St. Paul Lutheran Church in Unionville, Michigan, on this Thursday, the 19th of October, in the year of our Lord, 2023. I'm glad you can join us as we end our day with God's Word in prayer. As we do, this is now week 42, day 4, of reading through the New Testament in 2023. And that brings us to Hebrews chapter 5. Uh, so again, the book of Hebrews is written kind of for the main purpose of encouraging God's people as they face persecution, as they face opposition. And it has done that by emphasizing how as precious and as valuable and as meaningful as the old covenants that they were used to, that they had fought for, that they had stood firm for, as valuable and important and powerful as those were, what they had received in Jesus Christ was even greater. That Jesus himself was even greater. And so that comes, uh, that point comes to a head now here in Hebrews chapter 5. So let's turn to our text. Hebrews 5. For every high priest chosen from among men, is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this, he is obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins, just as he does for those of the people. And no one takes this honor for himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not exalt himself to be made high priest, but was appointed by him who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him, being designated by God a high priest after the order of of Melchizedek. About this we have much to say, and it is hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Thus far Hebrews chapter 5. So here he begins to draw to a close this point about Jesus, who is our high priest. Uh, and, and again, the, the main point here is this function of the priest standing in the place of the people before God. That was the central function of Aaron and his successors who served as priests in God's temple. They stood between the people and God so that they could take the needs, the petitions, the prayers of the people to him, and they could extend to them God's grace, God's forgiveness. And all of them, all that those priests were tasked with doing each and every day, now comes 
to a head in Jesus Christ. It all be, is completed. It all is fulfilled. It all is wrapped up neat, neatly and tied up with a bow by what Jesus has done. And there's a little bit more to be said yet about that point. But let's just stay with that for the moment. That who he was and what he did was for you. That his perfect life is credited to you. In Galatians 3, it says, Whoever has been baptized into Christ has put on Christ. Now when God looks at you, he sees your uh, he sees his dearly loved child when he looks at you. But this is really a, a, a valuable image, perhaps more valuable to them because they had seen and dealt with the priests on a daily basis, day after day, week after week, year after year. Those priests were the ones who pronounced God's blessing, who mediated that covenant, but now you have the fulfillment of Jesus Christ, who not only mediates the covenant in the sense of reminding you of your part, reminding of you, reminding you of what you need to do in order to earn the blessings that God established for you under that covenant, but actually assures you that he has kept that covenant perfectly in your place. He is your mediator with God. And he stands in your place as he lives a perfect life, as he suffers and dies in your place, and also as he rises again. Let's close with Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. All right, as always, thank you for joining us as we end our day with God's word and prayer. God willing, we will see you tomorrow at this same time. In the meantime, God's blessings on your night.